your federal constituency from any of state. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I know that there is enough science to move an aircraft from a particular location and get it to land at a destination without being manned by anybody. There is enough science to it. And as our brother Chris has brought to our attention, the challenges of the aviation industry in Nigeria, because when you see the plethora of accidents, the challenges are self-evident. And the last one was the, the problem of skidding of runway in Port Harcourt due to flooding. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I know we have sufficient science to predict weather situation. But Mr. Speaker, there isn't enough science to predict negligence or the behavior of individuals with regard to diligent action or negligence when it rains and it floods the wrong way. If the aircraft must land, Mr. Speaker, why must the aircraft be encouraged to land when the runway is flooded? If it is flooded, is the drainage system a matter of neglect to clear it, or is it not sufficient? If it's not sufficient, why would we encourage an aircraft if we are observant? and the personnel of the industry are there, why should we allow the aircraft to land in the first place? Or is it supposed to drain? The runway is supposed to drain, and it's not draining. So there are certain issues we must interrogate for us to get our facts right. It's not just easy to relate or relay all the issues that have been happening in the industry. I'll give you an example. The Enugu airport was 1.8 kilometers. It was reconstructed and it is now 3 kilometers of the runway. Over, for about six months, the water level at the airport makes it impossible for the tarmac to be stable. Each time you pass it, the water table continues to come up. And you ask, is it the problem with the aircraft, or is it the pro problem with scoping, design, or due diligence when you are trying to conceive the reconstruction of the airport? So when you look at it properly, you find out it's not the science of flying, Mr. Speaker. It's the human element in it. So we need to do the obvious, and that is making sure that we have qualified personnel that will man this infrastructure. That we have when we construct. You know, the, what I have seen over the years, not particular uh, uh, focus on the civil aviation industry. What I have seen over the years is that we are, we are good at having brand new things. Once a hotel comes on, we move in. Good bed sheets, good uh, walls, properly painted. After two years, you begin to have issues of maintenance. I heard you speak the other day about the challenges we have that this, this whole edifice is on the verge of uh, collapsing because of challenges of maintenance. But when you go to other jurisdictions, Mr. Speaker, you have buildings that have lasted 800 years. They do not do so because they can stand 800 years. They do so because they are retooled, maintained over a period of time. So I will invite Parliament to ensure that we don't lose our eye on the ball. The aircrafts 
fly very well. We have properly trained personnel. And we all understand there is human error. But each time we continue to have problems, and they tell you the, the, the runway is flooded. Mr. Speaker, runways are designed that they are not flooded. I had the opportunity of chairing the House Committee on Works in Eight Assembly. And I was interrogating the Surveyor General. If you have call stations throughout this federation, you have no business. You have no business not landing at any time you want in this country. Except there is any extreme bad weather situation. Whether the weather is hazy, whether it's in extreme darkness, you can land aircraft in this country. And at that, when we were there, we tried to retool them, and they are trying to establish call stations throughout the Federation, to the point that even our security forces, there were sufficient correlation between them and the Soviet General of the Federation. It was when we got in that we now made it possible for them to make sure that they relate, because these call stations are are alive all the time. They are alive all the time, and they give you signals. And it is when you use the coordinates that you can fly from one point to the other. That is what they call total radar coverage. And there is no country that does it without the Soviet General of the Federation. So, Mr. Speaker, we appreciate the concerns that have been raised by our brother, uh, uh, Chris uh, Azubog, but it is just one too many. We should expect that this session of the assembly will make sure that our people are tooled properly, retooled, to maintain the little they have, and we can improve from there. Thank you, and God bless you.